Ink pads are a craft room basic for crafters who love to stamp, but we can do so much more with them. Let's check it out. Before I start making cards, I just wanted to quickly show you what I do when I get new inks, like these four apothecary colors from Catherine Pooler. These are part of the spa line, so they're more muted and less saturated than the party colors. I like to say that I'm a party girl who likes to visit the spa once in a while, but ginger and terracotta make me want to visit it even more. When I first saw it, wintergreen was not appealing to me at all, but wait until you see how it works together with the other three. First, I label the ink pads themselves so I can see what they are when they're in my storage containers over my desk. I print clear labels on my label maker and I put these on the lids next to the Catherine Pooler logo. Next, I create little samples by swiping the inks onto a piece of scrap cardstock. I coat that with some clear packing tape to protect the colors from the ink and also from the sun. My craft room is very bright and cardstock has been known to fade. Then I use the eye from the Ellen Hudson Classic Block Alphabet set, and oops, before I cut them, I add double-sided tape to the back of the cardstock. Then I cut one from each color, and I stick it to the base of the ink pad. I also swatch my inks. I use a magnetic system for my swatching, and I've got a full video explaining it all. I'll link that below. I cut cardstock to the same size as the adhesive magnets, and I mask off a quarter inch on one side before adding the ink directly to the unmasked portion. I just used the marks on my work surface to help me get that quarter inch fairly straight and even. When I remove the mask, I write the name of the color in the white area, and then I can look for a close Copic color match. I compare my swatch to my Copic hex chart, and then I try a few shades for each ink color. I choose the one that I think matches the best, and I write that on the swatch as well. If matching your Catherine Pooler inks to Copics interests you, I've created a chart of all the inks along with my best Copic matches. I don't have all the Copics, so I've also left a column so you can fill in your best match if it's different. It's free and available on my blog, which is linked below. Finally, I use the corner of my score pal to line up the sticky side of the adhesive magnet and the swatch. Then I'm ready to add it into my pretty swatch board that you can see here. Now let's make some cards. Of course, the first most obvious way to use ink pads is to stamp with them. I'm using the Geometric Botany Background Stamp Set from Altenu on a white card panel. I stamped it with the apricot ink and I left both the cardstock and the stamp in place because I'm going to re-stamp and emboss a bit later. The cool thing about this set is that it includes all the shapes you need to color in the background by stamping. I started with the flower centers and the terracotta ink and it was pretty easy to get the placement right. Then I moved on to the apricot and the outer flower. That was a little harder to line up because the ink doesn't really show up on the stamp very clearly and the lines on the stamp panel are in the same color but it is very forgiving as you'll see and you still get a beautiful look even if this layer isn't perfectly stamped. Next I added mint to the little tri-leaf shapes all over and these were very easy to line up. I added a couple more details so that I would have all four colors on the panel and then I stamped the background again with clear embossing ink from WOW. I poured gold embossing powder over top and then I heated it in my foil lined shoebox lid which allows me to heat everything up right to the edges without trying to hold on to the panel and maybe burning my fingers. To finish this card I trimmed the panel and I cut a circle from the center. I added a gold circle back in, popped up with a paper rose hug sentiment on top along with some golden illusion gems from Crafty Meraki. Next is direct to paper. I'm creating a solid panel of each color for my next card, which will include an inlaid die cut technique. This right here is why I no longer have much colored cardstock on hand. I find it so much easier just to have white cardstock and scraps on hand and color them rather than trying to store all the different colors. I press the ink pads onto the paper rather than swiping. I find I get better coverage this way and notice that it's not exactly smooth either. These inks will dry back in color and smooth out too, and you'll see that in a second. Before I move on to wintergreen, I'm going to make sure that I use up the excess ink on my work surface by spritzing water into it and then mopping it up with a piece of white cardstock. This is a form of ink smooshing. You can do it with watercolor cardstock if you prefer, but I find that regular cardstock works fine, and if it warps, I just run it through my die cutting machine without a die to flatten it. I did the same with the wintergreen, and this panel gives a very, very subtle, almost watercolor wash look, which will make a very pretty background panel. Now that they're all dried, you can see how smooth the colors are. Now for some die cutting. I recently got this cover plate from a pocket full of happiness that has such a fun retro feel that I think will look fabulous in these colors. 
but I want to mix so I cut each panel with the die and also from a scrap of gold metallic cardstock to fill in the patterns. I also cut it from white and I glued that to my card base, making sure that the glue was all over the card base so when I put the pieces in I don't have to put glue on each one. They'll have a sticky spot to land. I put the pieces in kind of randomly, adding a gold piece every once in a while. When I had all the petals in, I went back in and put matching dots in each petal and a contrasting dot in the center of each flower. I didn't even add a sentiment to this one. I love this pattern so much I didn't want anything distracting from it. I think those shiny touches of gold make this card elegant enough for any occasion. Before I move on, here's a card using that circle off cut from the first card and the smooshed wintergreen panel from the second. See how that pale panel adds just a bit of texture and interest without distracting from the detailed focal circle. I finished it with a sentiment from Waffle Flower. Next is blending. You can blend directly on paper, but first I'm going to use this Geo Tiles layering stencil set from Pink Fresh Studios. Each stencil is labeled with a number and marks for lining up your four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel perfectly. I lined my paper up under the first stencil layer and placed it on the sticky mat in my Misty. This will hold it in place even when I change the stencil layers. There are only three layers, but I have four colors. So for layer two, I blended ginger and apricot to look like an ombre from light at the top to darker at the bottom. Terracotta was my final layer. Here's how it looks. This is gorgeous on its own and it has a crisp white border around the design, but I also have the matching cover plate, which I cut from gold and glued on top. Again, these little gold touches give a really elegant feel. To finish this one, I trimmed the panel with a square die and then I added a gold frame so that it looks like it was meant to be a square. I have the Essential Squares dies which cut these narrow frames and that makes it really easy to create one that fits perfectly around the square cover plate panel. I added a stacked up Happy Birthday Sentiment die cut from MFT Stamps and some more of those golden illusion gems. This next card really just combines direct to paper and blending, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to add dimension to a flower die cut. I cut this layered daisy from memory box from white cardstock and I pressed the apricot ink down onto each one for my base color. Then I grabbed the ginger ink and a mini blending brush and I added it to the centers while the apricot was still wet. This means that the colors will blend very smoothly with very little effort. I dipped the flower center into the terracotta for a pop of intense color. Once it was all dry, I added some gold splatter by adding water to my gold metallic watercolor pan, picking it up with my brush and just tapping it over top. For my background, I took the wintergreen ink and a blending brush and I started from the center with circular motions, lessening the pressure as I moved outward. This gives a soft blend that fades out to white at the edges. I'm trying out the new Tim Holtz Media Grip Mat and right now I'm really enjoying how it's holding my paper in place while I blend. To finish this card, I added an Ellen Hudson Happy die cut from Gold Cardstock and a stamped script birthday. The last way to use ink pads, at least for today, is watercolor. To start, I embossed this Catherine Pooler Flower Power background stamp onto some white cardstock with gold embossing powder. And it was only at this point that I realized I should have used watercolor cardstock. So I redid it, and here it is. You can see I didn't even put the cardstock back in the same place, so there's a white area at the top that didn't get stamped. But I'm making a square card anyway, so that will just give me a place to pick it up without worrying about smudging the ink or the powder. Now for the watercoloring, I simply smoosh the edge of each ink pad right onto my glass work surface. Anything slick will work as a palette, but you may want to consider using something that's white so you can tell what the colors look like. Then I used a water brush to pick up the first color and paint the petals of one of these geometric flowers with the lightest ink. I added some ginger to each petal and then finally terracotta in the centers. I did a bunch of flowers but not all of them, just to break up the pattern and create some visual interest. Of course I smooshed the remaining ink when I was finished and that background can be used on a future project. Then I did the watercoloring with the wintergreen, creating some soft greenery around the flowers on my panel, again letting it fade out to white. I have to say that despite it not being my favorite when I started, and honestly, it probably still isn't my favorite on its own, I do think it added a welcome pop of cool to the other three warm colors in all of these card designs. To finish this one, I trimmed the panel, added a Catherine Pooler sentiment and die cut, along with some gems in the centers of the flowers. I love my Catherine Pooler inks for the many techniques I can do with them, but whatever inks you have, you can definitely do more than just stamp with them. Which technique would you try first? Let me know in the comments below.
Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.